Well, here at Canlines 2018, all the talk has been about diversity, whether it's through uh, different uh, businesses and what they can do through advertising, the different faces you might see on a screen. But what about men? Well, somebody who's been doing a lot of thinking about this is Faith Popcorn at Brain Reserve. You've been doing a lot of research. You've published a report. What have you found? And if you, uh, that men are in trouble and that while everybody's focusing on women, me too, time's up, can't do it, you know, and women are coalescing to overcome, men are going like, what happened? And um, we have so many statistics. I mean, male suicides are up, way up, 70% and uh, testosterone down 17% globally, and the Y chromosome is breaking up a bit. And I think men are thinking like, I don't know how to behave anymore. And that says to a marketer, when, you're, when your target is shaky, how do you reach them? How do you talk to them? How do you embrace them? How do you make them comfortable with your brand? So it's a, a thing, it's a problem. Most marketers are looking to deliver the right message to the right consumer at the right time and, and tailor that message accordingly. How does this complicate CMOs' lives? Well, CMOs have complicated lives anyway because they're trying to understand women and they're almost all men, thing one. But thing two is, how do you reach this men? Okay, 20% of them are staying at home taking care of the kids. You know, uh, another 30% of them are going to be robo-replaced because they have those kind of jobs, like, you know, some of the truck drivers' jobs do things jobs, you know? So um, the women in their lives, but that's only like a small portion, they're only 23% of families that are traditional are, are pushing back or, you know, going to work or just living their own lives or trying to uh, be more individual, be themselves. And I think that men are not programmed for this. So I think it will be a reprogramming, a rewiring, a re-coaching uh, to get everybody on a better uh, keel. You had a panel with Violet Chachki. Yes, so let's, she's wonderful. Let's talk about those who don't necessarily identify as male, female. Or female, right. How do they fit into this, this complex issue? Okay, so gender fluid. So Facebook recognizes 75 different ways to express your gender. Violet is trans. She likes to be called she or they. She's absolutely gorgeous. She won RuPaul's Drag Race. She won $100,000, which is pretty cool. And I asked her, I said, how should, how can we help men, you know, do better? What should we be saying to them? And she said, say tough titties. And really, it's up to them. We can't instruct them. And that's interesting because men don't go to each other much, right, for help and support or education. And this may be a time where men are going to make friends to help them through this uh, period. So gender fluidity, gender stretch. I said to Violet, if you apply to a Fortune 200 company, and now they're saying Ms., they think it's so great, right? And Mrs. and Mr., what do you put down? She said, there's no way in hell a Fortune 200 would hire me. Now, then you're missing some very interesting talent. And you've just realized as a Fortune 200, you're missing talent with females because you don't know how to embrace them. Now you're missing talent with the other 75 kinds of gender who are more imaginative, who have had to fight harder, who have bigger brain stretch, and who are actually much more interesting to talk to. So it's just a new issue that we have to look at. It's yet another layer. Let's just pick on one thing. Uh, the Unstereotype Alliance is about getting all these different sort of sexes and, and genders and all the other different issues into our advertising. Isn't there a danger that we end up tokenizing? So we get all of those 75 representatives. Let's represented. get a trans. Let's get a, a you know tokenizing them yes for sure but don't you find when they drop a woman into a man commercial or they you know it's also so self-conscious because I don't think we actually know what to do but we don't have to worry that much longer because we're being you know we're being robot replaced and that's what's happening I mean there are robot uh, replacements if you have a, a replacement knee or elbow or whatever you're starting that Doctors, I, I talked on the future of medicine, are 
putting little bots and chips into you to measure how it's doing inside. Doctors are becoming keyboard artists, releasing stuff inside of you. Do you need a little more energy today? Do you need a little more, you know, focus? Um, do you need to come down a little? Are you too, you know, souped up? So everything's going to be dispensed internally. Hello, I'm James Wright. Thanks for watching Marketing Media Money. To check out more online videos, just click on the boxes and don't forget to subscribe to the CNBC Life channel at the bottom of the screen.